daughter. She's very pretty. I'm scared. Hello and welcome to DW Entertainment, all things Daily Wire Entertainment here. I am your host, Megan Basham, and today we are with Dallas Sonye, CEO of Bonfire Legend and the God King himself, Small G God King, Jeremy <laughs> Boring. So thanks for being here, guys. And, you know, Jeremy, just to start out, I want to maybe correct a misperception. I'm okay. getting a lot of questions from people thinking that we are out there making politically conservative entertainment. Hmm. So I would love for you to address that and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think people have very low expectations for what we're going to do in our entertainment venture. And one of them is they think we're either going to make, you know, the the typical ragtag bunch of high school football players find Jesus in Act 3 <laughs> movies, uh, or that we're going to make, you know, Hillary's Hard Drive Part 3 or something. But that's really not what we're trying to accomplish. We want to make entertainment for a broadly conservative audience. And I would define that not by necessarily the content of the movies, although certainly we want movies that have values that are consistently held by uh, conservatives. But many of the values that we're talking about are held by Americans of all political stripes. I think what distinguishes our movies is less what's in them and what's not. And what's not in them is the left-wing sucker punch. Mm. You know, I'm so tired of every time I turn on the TV, and TV's worse than movies, but movies are bad too. Every time you turn on a movie, uh, you're watching something that either is sort of values neutral, or even in some cases fairly values conservative. And Hollywood's willing to make that kind of content, they just feel they have to apologize for making it. And so somewhere in the middle of the movie, uh, the director feels like he has to insert the sucker punch. And that's his way of signaling to the rest of the industry, yeah, we had to cater to the rubes, but we don't mind telling them off somewhere in the middle of our movie. It's kind of like, right. hey guys, thanks for your money. Thanks for tuning in. We hate you. Right. And there's so many examples, right? Like you're, you're watching Avengers Endgame, which is a fundamentally conservative movie. It's superheroes. It's good versus evil. <clears throat> and you have Captain America, a character from the 1940s who wears right, red, white, and blue, fights Nazis, and is literally named Captain America. <laughs> And they have to tell us that he's engaged in a counseling session with this married gay man. Well, what's right. that about? And then things got quiet, and, and he, he cried as they were serving the salads. What about you? And I cried just before dessert. But I'm seeing them again tomorrow, so it's great. There's no reason to have done that except to say, hey, all of you people who like red, white, and blue and like the values of the 40s and like America, uh, Captain America doesn't belong to you. Captain America belongs to us. Or you watch, uh, you know, the, the, the funniest example ever, it's an old example now, 20 years ago, is you're watching the Star Wars prequel and suddenly Darth Vader is quoting George W. Bush, like <laughs> line for line quoting George W. Bush. What is that? That's a way of saying, thanks for all the fish, but we don't work for you. You don't own these characters. You have no, you have no claim over even your own highly beloved cultural uh, figures. And I, that's what we're not going to do. And so if you want to know what a Daily Wire movie is, it's a movie that a conservative can watch and know they're not going to get punched in the gut with some big virtue signal right in the middle. That's the fundamental defining quality of our, of our content. Well, and up to this point, you went to the Marvel movie anyway because it was your only option. It was either that or, like you said, yeah, the, right. the raw our kind of hallmarky Christian movie. There was nothing else in between. So Dallas, you're giving us something in between. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm giving you a creatively unfiltered uh, experience, yeah. right? That that's that's where I always come from. That that original script, hopefully the writer themselves have vetted it enough times in their apartment or in their uh, home to where th when they're sending it out to us and we're reading it, they have beat themselves up over and over to make sure it's the perfect script, right? So I'm not a huge fan of the development process, certainly not the Hollywood development process. And so to try and bring a creatively unfiltered movie to the Daily Wire audience is my goal. And um, if, if, it can, if it can relate to them uh, on a broader perspective, that is awesome also. So what are you looking for? I mean, I know that we're getting so many scripts from yep. so many people. What are you looking for as you're looking through them and going, this is one we want to make? Something Jeremy will say yes to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a strong female lead who's defending her children <laughs> and who probably kills the bad guy in the end, apparently. That's every every movie we've made so far. Uh, no, we're looking for, you know, I think that for a film to actually be, for, for anything to be art, it has to challenge us. And so, you know, I, I do want to make movies for a conservative audience, but that doesn't mean I want to pander to a conservative mm. audience. I want to make movies that challenge them, that make them think. 
uh, you know, Shut In is a great example of this. It's a tough film. It's a right. riveting film. It's it's challenging enough though that when New Line optioned it and from Dallas and they were setting it up as as a fairly big studio picture, they sanitized the script. They took all the jeopardy of you know the, in our movie there are children in jeopardy. Correct. You never actually see that in a Hollywood movie anymore. It's very challenging to watch it. Well, they strip that out. There's religious iconography through the film that helps our uh, hero. It's very central in the script to how the hero comes to find uh, her inner strength and, and find redemption. Well, that stuff gets sanitized out. Why? Well, it gets sanitized out because they want the movie to be palatable by everyone except conservatives. They want the movie to play overseas. They're, they're thinking about every person who might watch it except our audience. I think that our audience is up to being challenged. I think that they're up to thinking critically about the things that they believe. I think that they're, they don't want us to make propaganda. They want entertainment and they want art. And so that's the first thing that we're looking for. You know, a, a story that contains values that we know will be important to our audience, but also doesn't serve them up uh, as some sort of, you know, the way that I say it, we want to make po- we want to make movies that people want to see, not movies that they want to want to see. Mm. We're not looking for that, you know, yeah, I'm glad that's in the world. I'm going to support it. We want stuff that, yes, I'm happy. I want to sit down. I want to watch this. I want to think differently. Uh, I want to be challenged. I want to be entertained. I want to walk away with a movie that that I carry away with me that I'm still thinking about the next day. That's definitely what we had in Run, yeah. Hide, Fight. It's definitely what we have in Shut In. Okay, so now I'm, I'm being told that we have to get to the reader questions. I get so many emails from so many people, and I don't know what's up, but they ask me, what's going on with this? So I'm going to direct it to you. When will The Daily Wire make a comedy? That is a major question, I guess. Mm, and I don't mind telling you that 30 minutes, 30 minutes before walking into hair and makeup, I was in a table read for a Daily Wire comedy. So coming soon is what I'll say. Good news. All right, that's good news. Here's a good one. Do you guys always see eye to eye? And when you don't, who wins? Well, Jeremy wins, uh, but <laughs> but but I think I have a, 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 I'm on a very short list of people that can you know, get get him to do stuff. Uh, so I'm very proud of that fact. No, but I, I think I think I challenge him and he challenges me. I think we have very similar skill sets, but we also have very different uh, current sort of day-to-day operations. And so it really does work well as a partnership. I think that he can trust that I'm going to go out there and, and work as if my life depends on it and vice versa. Um, but in terms of taste, yeah, we've, we've really <laughs> disagreed Twice or three times, and it's it's a hilarious. It's it's way funnier a conversation than when we do agree. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, on that note, you know, some people have been asking. Apparently, they've been reading your bio, Dallas, because I am getting um, that you have worked with Vince Vaughn in the past. They want to know: Are are you going to bring Vince Vaughn into yeah. the Daily Wire house? We will one day for sure. He knows it. I know it. Um, but uh, he's about to go do a show on Apple uh, with the Ted Lasso producers oh, and yeah. writers. Good for him. So he's uh, uh, an old Carl Hassan book. Uh, so he's 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 going to be busy for a while. But but one day we'll pull him in. We'll Charl- pull him over. <laughs> we'll Charlton Heston him. <laughs> right. He, he'll be waiting for us. So let me. So Jeremy, one question that a lot of people are asking right now is: Are we planning to become the new Netflix or Prime? Are we going to get that competitive? Mm. Well. Netflix has 200 million subscribers. Uh, they have, you know, 20 billion dollars plus that they can spend on content every year. I have delusions of grandeur. I don't know if they're that grand, uh, but yes, we're you know we're in it to compete. We we know that right now we can't compete on a volume level. Yeah. Right. We we can't make movies as big as the movies that they can make. We can't make as many uh, projects as they can make. Um, so we don't. It, it would be silly to say we're competing directly against Netflix. That's not. That's not true right now. Uh, but what is true is that we're not trying to compete against our sort of conservative peers. You know, I don't see The Blaze as our competition. Right. Uh, I don't see Breitbart as our competition. You know, when, when I think about those guys, I, I think of allies, I think of friends, I think of peers. Uh, when I think about what I want for The Daily Wire, I think of Netflix and The New York Times and HBO. Uh, I think about The Washington Post. Uh, I think about how do we elevate the level of our journalism to a place where one day conservatives have a hand in setting narrative instead of just reacting to narrative. And when I think about our entertainment venture, I think how do we evolve to a place where it is a dollar for dollar value play, where people can come over here, become members of the Daily Wire and get content on par with uh, and of, of a similar frequency to what they could get, maybe not from Netflix, but say from a from a HBO Max or something like that. That's a long play. It's gonna take right. us a long time to make good on that vision. What we're gonna to try to do now 
is when we make something, have it be good. Right now, the mission is the value. Yeah. Like we think that our audience wants to be a part of this journey with us. They want to be a, a part of the process of seeing this change happen in the marketplace. And so they're willing to go along with us on this journey where, yeah, there's not as many, you know, what I've been saying for the last year, you know, you can become a subscriber at The Daily Wire and get Run, Hide, Fight. You can become a subscriber <laughs> at Netflix and get every movie ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But we think that as long as Run, Hide, Fight uh, is acceptable to our audience, challenging to our audience, but acceptable, as long as they're entertained, as long as they're provoked, uh, that they'll take that journey with us as we get bigger and bigger and more and more competitive. Well, how about theatrical releases? I mean, are we looking at big screen possibilities? I, I, I think Terror on the Prairie in particular, with its vistas, lends itself to a theatrical experience. What that looks like, right? Because you want to keep the focus on the platform. That's right. But if you can, keep, if you can use theatrical as an extension or a supplement, right? A way to build a, a, an audience and, and excitement, I think that's great. It's worth noting, though, that small films are not playing well in theaters in the post-COVID era. Correct. So all of those sort of economics are changing, the, how many people are willing to go. You know, if you make Spider-Man, everybody's going to show up in the theater to watch it. But I think that one of the things that, that the lockdowns did is they taught Americans, they trained Americans to consume content differently. That's one reason we think we have such an opening with our platform. So I'm with Dallas. Uh, is it possible that we'll use theaters in some way to create an event, to create an experience on the right project at the right time with our audience? Absolutely. But our focus is on building a competitive SVOD platform. Well, I mean, the only reason I might think about it is having gone to the set to visit you, to watch some of the filming. That was a spectacular setting. And you go, that that almost seems like yeah. the kind of setting that is built for IMAX, that is built for the <laughs> biggest screen you can find. I mean, it's just so stunning. And I think that was you know, what big, I want people to experience. I'm a big fan of seeing movies in theaters. Oh, yeah. E even Tenet was the first one to come out, the Chris Nolan movie. And I went opening day, and I've seen every major release in a theater, 30-plus movies. But I've also create, you know, watched a ton of movies on streaming and things like that. The opportunity for independent-minded, spirited movies and for series is in streaming. The end. Right. Yeah. For, for anyone other than Spider-Man, theaters are dead. The end. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a way of consuming content that is only for $200 million movies unless you're using it as a supplement. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm investing all this time and my e energy and resources. It's great that I'm uh, you know, sort of civically aligned with the company and with the, with the founders, but, but really this is because this is the best way for my, the, the movies that I love to make mm -hmm. to exist and be seen. Well, and you know, we talked a little bit about uh, in a previous segment about how you are casting these people who have a lot of times nowhere else to go at this point. They want to be in really great art. They want to be in authentic entertainment. Those kind of productions aren't getting made. Now we're making them. So if you could just pick anybody, who would you be looking at right now? This is who I want to star in our next Daily Wire production. Oh, it's Mel Gibson. Yeah. Oh, we talk yeah. about it every all the time. So have you made calls or where? Oh, I've made I've, I've made a movie with him. <laughs> uh, I've made a movie with him called Dragged Across right, Concrete. Right. So he's yeah. a friend. Um, you know, he's he. We're we're gonna figure it out one day soon. So last question: um, What are you hoping that people take away from Shut In? What are you hoping that they walk away yeah. from this movie remembering? Well, as a company, what I hope that they walk away with is. Uh, being challenged in their expectations about what Daily Wire can deliver. Mm -hmm. I hope that they realize that, oh, these guys are serious. They're going to make real movies. This is this is genuinely engrossing content that these guys are putting out. You know, I, I like to say one day, you know, we'll probably make a Bible movie and Christians won't like it. That's how you'll know. Because <laughs> we just want to, we, we always want to be uh, challenging people because the, because the Bible isn't just the true, or it isn't just the beautiful, right? It's right. also the true. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, I hope that people walk away from this believing in redemption. We live in a really graceless age right now. You know, we've seen it with the Joe Rogan events over the last couple of weeks that uh, apologies in a graceless society are just confessions before the executioner. That's bad for the world. That's not the world we want to live in. And Shut In is fundamentally a movie about redemption. It's, it's a, a woman who starts the film believing that she's a victim of circumstance when in fact she's a victim of her own decision, her bad decision making. And through what she suffers through her trauma, through having to rise uh, and become a mother, she actually becomes a fully redeemed, fully realized woman. And by the end of the film, you're, you know, at the beginning of the film, you know, this isn't a good mother. Uh, this isn't someone who you think should be responsible for these kids. By the end of it, you know, she'll lay down her life for these children 
and everybody's gonna you know, take the next steps and be okay. I hope that that, I think that's a really important lesson, especially given the moment that we live in right now. Yeah. And I hope people walk away with it. Ho Hollywood is a terrible place to work, live, uh, experience life, raise a family. Mm. So this is just personal for me. Mm. I, I wanna make the best movies possible for an audience here at Daily Wire that I admire and know and care so deeply about. Uh, and so this is us putting all of our effort and energy into movies for this audience yeah. who deserve competitive cinema that they can admire. So, you know, you hear all the time from all of these celebrities who worked with her on The Mandalorian. You hear from really anybody she's come in contact with how wonderful Gina Carano is, what a sweetheart she is. And I'm going to brag a little bit. I did get to meet her. I got to go to the set. I got to interact with her a little bit. And she was as sweet as they say. But I also think, you know, she was amazingly talented watching her do some of those scenes live. And I mean, what was that like for you working with her? What was the experience of shooting her? Sure. I mean, I felt very protective of her because, you know, she was in this vulnerable position, yeah. uh, putting herself out there almost as the bulletproof jacket for so many people mm. who uh, felt the same way that she was, but didn't have the voice that she did. So when she came and agreed to do a movie with us, that, that, that became a personal uh, journey for me, a very, very important one. So on set with her, she's such a delight. Yeah. I mean, she is incredible. Uh, she's a woman on fire. She's an incredible actress in this movie. The, 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 the film itself is just gorgeous and action packed. Uh, it's a competitive Western. People are gonna, people are gonna freak out. Yeah, I'm so proud of Shut In and I'm so proud of what DJ created, what uh, what Rainey brought to the screen. I'm so proud that Vincent Gallo uh, chose to to step up and do this for us, and and he delivers in such an impactful way. I'm also bummed that we're not releasing Terror on the Prairie <laughs> like the next day <laughs> because uh, we've spent the last week, you know, revising it and making notes on it and and working on the edit. People will not believe. I know. Again, you know, people have these low expectations for the Daily Wire. I think people have low expectations for Gina too. It's like. The Mandalorian, Disney, you're at the you're on top of the world, and yeah, now you're gonna go over to the Daily Wire and make a movie. People are their minds are going to be blown <laughs> when they see what Gina brings to this picture. Do you feel like you have to be not just good, but you have to be phenomenal to sort of overcome the sneer or the dismissive attitude of mainstream Hollywood? I think that you have to we're we aspire to be phenomenal. Okay. You, know, you have to have aspiration. You have to set your bar incredibly high. You have to aim incredibly high. I mean, one thing that anyone who's ever made a movie knows is that it's a miracle when a film gets made. You know, you watch a movie in Hollywood and it's not very good. And you're like, oh, with all the money, with all the resources, with all the talent, how, how did this movie turn out so bad? It's because it's hard. Right. It's because there are so many variables. <laughs> you know, we show up for the first day of shooting in Montana for Terror on the Prairie there is a foot of snow overnight. <laughs> and, and so you have to change your entire schedule because you're suddenly thinking, well, the snow is going to melt off in 72 hours. We can't, and you know, you don't shoot films chronologically. Right, so you're right. just worried like in the middle of scenes, it'll be like camera on Gina, <laughs> looks like a desert. Camera on Nick, there's a foot of snow behind him. What do you do in this there's situation? There's your comedy. Exactly, uh. yeah. Making movies is always the comedy. And so every, you're constantly having to overcome all of these obstacles. And so, you know, you, you see a bad movie, it was just as hard to make for the filmmakers as a good movie. So I, I don't want to claim the mantle of phenomenal, <laughs> but I will say we're aspiring to be phenomenal. And with Shut In and with Terror on the Prairie, uh, we, we have hit close to the mark. We've, I'm very proud of what Dallas has accomplished, very proud of what DJ accomplished, what Michael Polish has accomplished with Terror. Uh, and I think people are just going to be, they're just going to be stunned. Yeah. I'm not an objective human. We killed it. <laughs> we crushed it. <laughs> On, on both I, movies. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I know it, you know? Um, and, and people will feel it because we love the movie so much, it will translate to the audience yeah, because right. they'll, 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 they'll it, it's, an, it's contagious. And I know that we also just announced another movie, The yeah. Hyperions. Can we talk about that? Oh, man. I, I'm so stoked about this. We, Dallas called me and he, you know, obviously Dallas is a filmmaker, not a film acquirer. Uh, but in this particular instance, Dallas was working with our friends over at uh, Saban Films, and they screened a film for him called The Hyperions. And Dallas said, Jeremy, you've got to watch this. He sent me a link. I almost don't know how to describe this film. It's so, except to say, Dallas and I are both, uh, we don't want for confidence. You know? <laughs> no, get out. <laughs> I can tell you with absolute certainty, neither one of us could make this film. 
It's yeah. so particular. The filmmaker John McDonald is genuinely a visionary guy. So precise, so particular. You could only compare him to a Wes Anderson, mm. to someone who thinks about the composition of every frame. He made most of the props in the film by hand. I don't want to say too much about this movie, except that it is exquisite. It's hilarious. It's deeply moving. John, not a conservative. You know, it's important right. to note that not everyone working on these films is part of our tribe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're over time. Do we want to build kind of a conservative industry? Of course we do. But right now that doesn't exist. Right now we have to work with uh, people who are willing to work with us. And if somebody's <laughs> willing to work with us, we're asking our audience to accept that. You know, shut in, great example. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a three person cast and two of the three probably disagree with all of our politics, but they brought their all. They delivered for us on screen. They did a great job and they were willing uh, to work with us. You know, they were willing uh, to come have a film for our audience. You know, and I think that's a, a really important and worthy thing uh, for an artist. And same with John McDonald, the filmmaker behind the Hyperions. You know, he's a guy with his own politics and I doubt they're our politics, uh, but he made a film that I know our audience will love. It's a film with universal values. It's, it's, it's not a superhero movie, but it is ostensibly a superhero Ooh. movie. It's a movie about superheroes, but it is not a superhero film. It's really a movie about family, what family means, about the families we choose, about the mistakes we make along the way, and about uh, just about the love uh, that can only exist from people who, who have to make sacrifices together. It's just, and it's mind-blowing. It's so good. <laughs> that was excellent. Thank you so much, guys. My name is Vista Mandelbaum. My brother and I have taken four hostages. Everybody against the wall. We've come for one thing. Our Titan badges. Is this real? What yes, ma'am, this is real. Are you guys signing this? Well, I want that too. It's the police. They want to talk to whoever's in charge. This Titan badge can grant an individual superhuman power. Perhaps it's time for someone else to take on the responsibility. Meet Apollo. I'd recommend next time using your power. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you think so. Calling all Hyperians. On my way. You're making such a mess in here. We've got a Hyperion in route. Not a good time to look stupid. <laughs> Shots fired! God, one! Give me my gun! Suit up for adventure. trying to destroy me. Next question, how's the family? The family is, um, uh, gosh, what is it? Marvelous. 